Hello everyone and welcome to your very first lecture video for chapter 6, uh, part of the Spanish 1020 or Spanish 2 series here. Um, so for those of you guys who have had me before for Spanish 1010, you are probably familiar with how these videos work and how I learn and our, our book is set up, but some of you guys I know are new, so I want to take some time to explain. Um, chapter 6 is called Como Pasas al Día, or How Do You Pass the Day? How Do You Spend Your Time? Um, and each chapter in our textbook is broken up into two separate learning components. Our first learning component um, deals with body parts, reflexive verbs, and daily routine vocabularies. So you see an alarm clock here and some body parts. Um, the second part of our chapter, part two, if you will, um, kind of deals with sports and sports vocabulary and outdoor activities. So you can see um, my photos here will kind of help you explain that. Um, we'll hop right in and go through each of these individually. Um, during the course of our lecture today, I may ask you for a moment, hey, go ahead and pause me here and give this one a try, or uh, this is how this one works. So I try to make it as similar to uh, being in a real classroom as possible for you. Okay, so we're going to start just by taking a look here. Um, this is a, a photo, a screenshot that I took from your book, and this gives you different um, little body parts here and also different household items, one might say. So let's take a look at this woman over here first. You can see um, this is pointing to la cara. Her cara is her face. Um, up here up top, she has el pelo, her hair. We're pointing to her nariz, her nose, also her dientes, her teeth. And of course, her boca, her mouth is open, la boca. Um, here, we are pointing to her chest, el pecho. El pecho, down here, her stomach, el estómago. Be careful there, there's an accent on the O, so estómago. Uh, over here, we have her alarm clock, el despertador. Um, we have la rodilla, her knee, and la pierna, her leg. Down here, her ankle, el tobillo, her foot, el pie. And then her toes, los dedos de pie. So funny story about those. Notice that a pie is a foot. Dedos, as you'll see from this guy over here, your dedos are your fingers. So dedos de pie are the fingers of your feet, or your foot finger, we might say, or your toe. So careful, fun fun fact there about how we are very literal in Spanish. So los dedos del pie. Um, over here with this dude, you have his ear, la oreja, his eye, el ojo. Uh, his head, la cabeza, this is pointing to his neck here, el cuello, we have his hand, la mano, shoulder, el hombro, and back, la espalda. Um, you also have some other things like his arm, el brazo, and then we get into some household items. You can see he is wearing a toalla, a toalla, a towel. If we were in Argentina, that double L makes a sh sound in some cases in which case that would be pronounced la toasha, la toasha. Um, over here you can see he has some champu. I'm sure you'll never guess what champu is, correct, shampoo. Oh, and I forgot a body part, sorry. This was his elbow, el coro, is what it's pointing to here. Down here we have el jabón, the soap, el jabón. We have his cepillo de dientes, his toothbrush, and of course he's using pasta de dientes. So, I don't know about you, but that was a ton of information. So what we're going to do here, um, I am going to show you a short little video here about body parts in Spanish. Um, be glad you're not in my in-person class because I actually make you do the dance. Um, if you have ever heard of the Head, Shoulders, Knees, and Toes song in English, yes, that song does exist in Spanish, and tell, let me tell you, it is so much more fun in Spanish. We're going to take a moment and listen to that together. So bear with me here. Um, it's just a very short one minute and 30 second video. So take a moment and feel free to dance along or sing along if you'd like. Here we go. Cabeza, hombro, rodilla y pie. Cabeza, 
So you got to hear those body parts. So we start out with cabeza, the head, followed by hombros, your shoulders. Be careful not to say hombre, that's a, that's a man. So cabeza, head, hombros, your shoulders, rodillas, your knees, followed by your pies, your, to, uh, your feet, your feet. So cabeza, hombros, rodillas, pies. Uh, it's a lot more fun in an in-person class when I can make you guys dance against your will, but unfortunately I can't do that here. So you just get to listen. Um, and then, of course, after cabeza, hombros, rodillas, pies, you have your ojos, your eyes, orejas, your ears, boca, your mouth, and then your nose, your nariz. So might be a good way to practice these body parts and make sure you know them for your test. So I'll give you an opportunity here to practice a little bit with your vocabulary. Um, I'm just going to pick a random one here. Let's look at uh, number three. And number three tells us, oop, if I can not scoot my box here. Number three tells us that usamos blank para hablar y para comer. So we use blank in order to eat and to talk. So we use blank in order to eat and to talk. What do we use to talk and to eat? We use our, yes, our mouth, good. How do I say mouth in Spanish? You don't remember, you can look back, but your mouth is la boca, la boca. So your answer to number three would be boca, okay? Number one says, blank está entre la cabeza y los hombros y sirve para mover la cabeza. So blank is between your head and your shoulders, and it serves for moving one's head. Obviously, that is your neck. The word for neck in Spanish should be? Good. It should be el cuello, el cuello. Careful there, the... The double L uh, does make a Y sound, a Y sound, el cuello, el cuello. Okay, um, a little more practice with these. So uh, if you've looked at your vocabulary at all, you probably know what some of these words mean. If not, I'm going to tell you, so it's okay. Uh, our model here tells us ducharse con agua fría. Ducharse is to shower, uh, to shower oneself specifically. Con agua fría, con cold water. So, um... The question asks, ¿Por qué una persona tiene que ducharse con agua fría? Why would a person have to shower themselves with cold water? Well, there's multiple reasons, but in this case, the student answered and said, La persona tiene mucho calor. Uh, the person is very hot. Okay, so that's a good reason why you might take a cold shower. Um, let's look at, at another one here. Uh, I'm just going to pick number one because it's easy. Um, so I could ask you, like, Por qué una persona tiene que sentarse al frente de la clase? Why would a person have to sit towards the front of the class? Hmm, maybe the person has to hear better. So la persona tiene que escuchar. O la persona tiene que ver la pizarra. They have to see the board. Okay, so you can kind of see how those work. And I'm running out of room here, so I'm just going to put escuchar. Um, so I think you can spend some time with those flashcards, learn your vocabulary without any trouble. Um, another area that is covered pretty extensively in this chapter is reflexive verbs. Okay, so when we're talking about reflexive verbs, we're talking about something that you do to yourself. Okay, so for example... I wash my hair. Am I washing my own hair? Hopefully. If I'm washing my own hair, that's reflexive. Okay? But um, I'm brushing my dog. Is brushing my dog reflexive? Well, it is my dog, but no, I'm not doing it to myself. I'm brushing my dog. I'm not brushing my own hair, so that's not reflexive. Okay? Uh, I'm scratching my back. That's reflexive. That's reflexive because I'm scratching my own back. But I'm scratching my cat's ear. Mm, not reflexive, not my own ear, okay? So you can kind of think about it that way. And notice that all these reflexive verbs, which are uh, detailed in your vocab list in your book, but all these reflexive verbs end in se, okay? So in Spanish 1, you probably learned that we have verbs that end in ar, er, and ir. So you'll see all those displayed here. Um, 
in order to conjugate, to get to that A, R, E, R, I, R, first we have to take off this say, and it moves to the front. Based on who you're talking about, talking about myself, um, the say changes to may. If I'm talking about yourself, the say changes to te. If I'm talking about you formal, him or her, it remains as say. Talking about we or ourselves, it remains as nos. Talking about your all, you, yourselves in Spain, it becomes os. And talking about their selves, um, themselves, excuse me, or your all, uh, in, in the plural form, it would also become se. So you have me, te, se, nos, os, and se. In this case, we've used the verb lavarse, which you may find over here. Yep, lavarse is to wash oneself. Okay. So I took the se on the end of lavar, and I took it off, and then I conjugated lavar in the normal way. I removed my ar and I added back o, as, a, amos, ais, and an. So me lavo, I wash myself. Te lavas, you wash yourself. Se lava, he or she, or you formal, washes themselves or yourself. Um, nos lavamos, we wash ourselves. Os lavais, you all wash yourselves. Um, and se lavan, they wash themselves. So. Careful with that, because if you take out this reflexive pronoun, the me, te, se, nos, os, or se, um, you end up with just I wash, you wash, he washes, we wash, and they wash. Well, what are they washing? Am I washing myself, or am I washing the dishes? Am I washing um, the car, or am I washing the dog? Like, we, we need to know. So this pronoun in the front is really important, okay? So there is an awesome little annoying song here, but it is very pedagogically valuable. I think it will help you to remember how to conjugate these verbs. So take a moment and enjoy um, this song. You'll find that I'm like good, the king of YouTube videos. Good grammar and spelling are important, but if you want to write essays that inspire... All right, sorry Hola. for the ad. So I've noticed over the years that people have a problem understanding how reflexive verbs work in Spanish. Especially for English speakers, they can be confusing because it's almost like memorizing a mathematical function or something just to use them. So I All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and skip to the song here since I've already given you a lesson. So really quickly, just take a moment and hear this very annoying but very valuable song. A reflexive verb in Spanish ends in say. First, you got to get the say out of the way. Then the verb you have to change, and the say you rearrange, and the say becomes mete no so so say. A reflexive verb in Spanish ends in say. First you gotta get the say out of the way. Then the verb you have to change, and the say you rearrange, and the say becomes mete no so so say. A reflexive verb in Spanish ends in say. First you gotta get the say out of the way. Then the verb you have to change, and the say you rearrange, and the say becomes mete no so so say. So, I could sing that and torture you like I do my students in class. I do make them um, sing the song various times. However, I will not do that to you because I can't, because you're online. So, be glad for that. Um, anyway, hopefully that song is somewhat helpful in making you remember. You've already seen the verb lavarse, so that's kind of my bad. Let me give you... One that is a little different. Let's try cepillarse, which is to brush oneself, like to brush your teeth. So you know that a reflexive verb in Spanish, hopefully you're saying, ends in se. And you know that first I have to get the se out of the way, right? So the verb I have to change, and the se I rearrange, and the se in this case becomes me, te, I'm going to space down. Se, nos, os, if the vosotros was there, I would tap in os, or se. Okay, next, I'm going to take my ar off of sepiar. I've dealt with this se, so I'm just going to go ahead and, boop, it's gone forever. Just go ahead and chop it off. Sepiar, I'm now going to take off my ar to conjugate. That leaves me sepi. Okay, so I can carry that down, kind of like math. Say P. Okay, if I want to say that I brush, I say me cepillo. You brush yourself, te cepillas. He or she brushes, se cepilla. We brush ourselves, nos cepillamos. 
The vosotros form here would be os sepiais, and I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to black that out. And then they brush, se sepillan. Okay, so you can see all of these. Your endings for an AR verb, o, as, a, amos, ais, and on, are all normal. All that changes is the se moves to the front and it becomes me, te, se, nos, os, or se. So you have those. Um, oh my gosh, but Mr. Harrison, what if a verb is a stem changer? What happens then? Oh, well, let me give you an example with a stem changer. So, acostarse we know is an O to UE stem change. If you remember from Spanish 1, we know that the O only changes to a UE when it's inside the boot. So that means it changes everywhere except for the nosotros and the vosotros form. So all these boxes that I'm circling here with my mouse, it does change from an O to U and a UE. Everywhere else it does not. So let's start again with our say. A reflexive verb in Spanish ends in say. First I gotta get the say out of the way. The verb I have to change and the say I rearrange, moving it to the front. And the say again becomes me, te, se, nos, os, or se. Okay, acostar. I am going to remove my AR, uh, which leaves me with acost. Um, you know that my O changes to a UE, so I get acuest, acuest, acuest. Up here it still stays acost, and this would stay acost as well, and then acuest. So to say that I go to bed, me acuesto. You go to bed, te acuestas. He or she goes to bed, se acuesta. We go to bed, nos acostamos, does not change to a UE because it's not inside the boot. The vosotros would be os acostáis, and then they go to bed, se acuesta. Okay, so you have all of those here displayed for you. Hopefully that's starting to make a little bit of sense. Um, now, I do want to take a moment and note about the present progressive tense. You may remember the present progressive from Spanish 1. The present progressive tense is your ing tense, or what we would call a gerund in English. Um, there's two ways you can do this. Typically, your reflexive pronoun, the me, te, se, nos, os, or se, always comes in front of your conjugated verb which is what you saw here. Acuesto is my conjugated verb. Acostamos is my conjugated verb. It went in front. Same thing with the present progressive. So you can say, me estoy duchando. To or for me, I am showering, or I'm showering myself. Me estoy duchando. In this case, the me came at the front of the sentence before the conjugated verb, which was duchando. Uh, well, estoy duchando. Um, in other cases, you can attach this to the end. So you can also say estoy duchándome, and it, it requires a written accent on the A here. So, me estoy duchando, I'm showering myself, or estoy duchándome, I'm showering myself. So, in either case, this um, is effective. You can do it either way. If you're ever unsure or you just don't want to chance it with the accent, just go ahead and put your pronoun before the conjugated verb, which in this case is estoy. Okay, um, now, if um, you are speaking to a native speaker, my experience has always been that native speakers are more likely to attach it to the end and stay soy duchandome. So, fun facts there. Um, a little bit of practice with these, and these are activities you will have to do this week in your textbooks. I'm just doing a couple of them, not all of them, and that's why. Um, look at number one. It says, El despertador suena a las ocho y tú blank. So the alarm clock goes off at eight, and you blank. Well, you can look, and you know that your reflexive pronoun to go with the to form from up here should be te. You can kind of look and cheat a little bit and say, El despertador suena a las ocho y tú te levantas y te vistes. You uh, get up and you get dressed. So te levantas y te vistes would be correct. So number two, you're going to put D. Okay, that was easy. We could cheat and just match. Well, they're not all that easy. Look at number two. No hay agua caliente. Oh my gosh, there's no hot water. Y por eso yo, and therefore I blank. So look at this one. I know that the reflexive pronoun that goes with yo should be me. So wait, wait, wait. I got it. I got it. There's no hot water. So therefore I me pongo un vestido elegante. I put on a elegant dress. Well, um, first of all, um, Probably not the right answer because if it, there's hot, no hot water, you're probably not getting dressed immediately like that. Um, secondly, there's probably a better answer here. So look down at the bottom. Um, letter F says that there's no hot water and therefore I prefer not to shower myself. So I'm not going to take a shower because there's no hot water. You know, prefiero ducharme. 
no, create the auto no duch on me. I prefer not to shower myself. So letter F uh, is the best in this case. Okay. Um, I also might ask you to write a sentence. So I'm going to look at number, let's just do number one because it's easy. It says los fines de semana. So on the weekends, yo, and it says acostarse. You know that a reflexive verb in Spanish ends in se. First, I got to get the se out of the way. The verb I have to change and the say I rearrange. And the say, in this case, because I'm talking about yo, becomes me. Acostar, we've already discussed, has a stem change from O to U-E. I remove my A-R and add back an O. So los fines de semana, yo me acuesto. I go to bed, and now I have to finish my sentence. I go to bed a las doce, at midnight. Um, okay, and you can go through and conjugate the rest of these as well. I think you're kind of getting the feel for how this works. Um, occasionally, in lessons like this, I also do incorporate some practice for the oral interview. In this case, you see some questions. I think these are actually, one of these is the exact question. Number one, it asks you, ¿A qué hora te despiertas de lunes a viernes? And then it says, ¿Y los domingos? ¿Y los sábados o los domingos? So what time do you wake up? ¿A qué hora te despiertas de lunes a viernes? So from Monday through Friday, what time do you wake up? I could say, me despierto a las 5 de lunes a viernes. I wake up at 6 o'clock from Monday through Friday. Um, pero los sábados yo me despierto a las 11. I don't get up till 11. Okay. So you can go through and you see I took the verb uh, despertarse was the initial verb despertarse. It had a stem change from E to IE, so this E did change to an IE, you'll notice down here. Um, my se obviously became me, because I was talking about myself. So we ended up with me despierto. So hopefully uh, this is starting to make sense for you, how this conjugation process works. If not, I did post some additional resources in the content section, feel free to take a look at those. Um, a little side note, something else that is discussed in this chapter are adjectives of time and frequency. I just briefly wanted to mention these. These are things that you mostly just have to memorize, um, but they are things that we use very commonly in Spanish, like siempre, always, and nunca, never, or you can have casi siempre and casi nunca, so almost always and almost never. Uh, you have other things like mañana, tomorrow, más tarde, later, todos los días, every day, ahora, right now. So here's an example you might see, todos los días, um, and you get to write a sentence. So todos los días, oh, sorry, I mixed up my caps. Todos los días yo bebo cinco tazas de café. Every day I drink five cups of coffee. So todos los días, every day I blah, blah, blah. Okay, I could have said todos los días yo voy al trabajo. I go to work every day. Over here, this girl, uh, she was given the word siempre, which means always, and she said, Siempre tomo café antes de la clase de español. I always drink coffee before Spanish class. That's cool. She used antes de before and she used siempre. So you got some time and frequency words um, in that sentence there. So these are all here for you. Um, you'll notice that some of these you've already learned and others are new. Um, generally, these adverbs of time typically come before the verb, um, so that's pretty obvious for you there in our examples that we just saw here. They were both on before the verb there, antes del verbo, if you will. So that's part one in a nutshell. That was our first part of our chapter. You had your body parts, daily routine, conjugating reflexive verbs, and those adjectives of time and frequency. That was part one. Um, in part two, you get into more of your sports vocabulary. So here we see all these awesome sports, and a lot of these are cognates. Um, and if you had me for Spanish one, we talked a lot about cognates, those lookalikes, words that look alike in two languages. So uh, notice here, this in lady has a raqueta. She has a racket, a raqueta, a tennis racket. Um, over here, these guys have a pelota, a ball. Uh, they're playing football, be very careful. Um, football is soccer, whereas football americano is what we would consider to be football. Okay, so football by itself is soccer. 
very popular in many Latin American countries. And then you have Fútbol Americano, which is football. Okay, and then you see some other awesome vocab here. Jugar al golf, to play golf, andar en bicicleta, riding a bike, montar a caballo, um, horseback riding, el badminton, <laughs> badminton, pretty obvious there, bucear, to scuba dive, pescar, to fish, and then this is a red, la red is a net, and then patinar, she's skateboarding with her patines, her skates. So all kinds of cool um, vocab words. You see some more also listed in your book, um, el atletismo excuse me, el atletismo, track and field. Um, another word for that that is often used is la pista. You have other sports here. There's el basketball, also called el baloncesto, el baseball, pretty easy to infer there, el tenis, el voleibol, la natación, swimming. Um, then you get some cool words as well, like lago, lake, and saco de dormir, a, a sleeping bag. Um... Aficionado is the word most commonly used for fan. You also hear in some countries uh, el fanatico or la fanatica also. Um, you get words for snowboarding, esquiar en tabla, uh, playing ping, -pong, ping pong, jugar al ping pong, and lots of cool verbs, levantar pesas to lift weights. So you can kind of practice those on your own with the vocab. Not too bad there. Um, so here's another example. Let's just look randomly here at number five. Um, es necesario tener una blank para jugar tenis. It's necessary to have a blank to play tennis. Oh gosh, what would I need? Well, I, notice it's feminine. It says una. So I need a raqueta to play tennis. I need a racket. Um, and you can go through and kind of figure out the rest. Look at number three. Cuando vamos a acampar, dormimos en blank. When we go camping, we sleep in el saco de dormir. A sleeping sack or a sleeping bag. <laughs> so those are there. Okay, I want to take a moment very quickly and I'm going to go full screen and hope and pray that this thing does not stop recording on me because it does that sometimes. Um, I want to take a moment. The big grammatical concept here for chapter six, one of the biggest takeaways is the preterite tense. And the preterite is one of the two past tenses in Spanish. Before we talk about the preterite, I want to take a moment to return back to the present tense that you should have learned back in Spanish 1010. So the present tense of hablar, if you remember to conjugate, we need to take off the AR. Um, by doing so, we then have to hobble on down, carry down our H-O-B-L, hobble on down, to say that I talk or I speak, we say yo hablo. You talk or you speak, tú hablas. Él, ella, usted habla. Nosotros hablamos, vosotros habláis, y ellos, ellas, ustedes hablan. So you get all those endings. O, as, a, amos, ais, and an are all there for you. Um, for an ER verb like comer, again, we remove our ER. We come on down, we carry down your COM, um, and you get como, I eat. Comes, you eat. Come, he or she eats. Comemos, we eat. Comes, um, you all in Spain eat, and comen, they or y'all eat. Finally, we have escribir in the present tense, where we end up taking off our IR, carrying down the escrib, and getting escribo, escribes, escribe, escribimos, escribis, and escriben. Hopefully you remember all of those present tense endings. So what we did there, we conjugated three verbs, hablar, comer, and escribir, in the present tense to say, I talk, I eat, and I write and so on and so forth. Now we're going to conjugate them in the past tense, in the preterite, to say that I spoke, or I talked, I ate, or I wrote. So all these are going to be in the past, okay? So again, I still take off the AR, I still hobble on down, now my endings are different. So to say, I spoke, hablé. You spoke, hablaste. He or she spoke, habló. We spoke, hablamos, Vosotros spoke, hablais, or, uh, perdón, sorry, hablais will be present, hablastes, and then they or y'all spoke, hablaron, hablaron. So, your new endings for an AR verb in the preterite, you have e, aste, o, amos, astes, and aron. So, e, aste, o, amos, astes, aron. So, those are there for you. For an ER verb like comer, again, remove your ER, come on down, to say that I ate something. Comí. You ate. Comiste. He or she ate. Comió. We ate. 
comimos, you all ate in Spain, comisteis, and y'all or they ate, comieron. So your endings here for an ER and an IR verb, luckily in the preterite, your endings are the same for ER and IR verbs, you get e, iste, io, imos, isteis, ieron. So try escribir here on your own, knowing that these endings are the same as an ER verb. Go ahead and pause me. Good, hopefully you have followed through these steps. Let's check your answers here. You removed your IR, you carried down your escrib, escribí, escribiste, escribió, escribimos, escribistes, and escribieron. So hopefully you ended up with these endings. Okay, um, there's one more thing you need to know about the preterite. You may have learned, uh, you, you may recall learning in Spanish 1, we talked about um, irregular yo verbs, also known as yo go verbs. We had a lot of verbs that didn't go, like um, poner became pongo, venir became vengo, salir became salgo, um, so on and so forth. So here with um, the preterite, we still have verbs that are irregular only in the yo form. So take tocar for example. To conjugate tocar, I'm going to take off my ar, carry down my toc. And if you're thinking about those preterite endings, if you were taking notes and paying attention, you are just going to slap your endings on here. A, aste, o, amos, astes, aron. Unfortunately, that's not correct. We can't say tose, tose. Uh, there's a rule that verbs that end in car, this one in this case, tocar, ends in car. So car verbs change to k, gar verbs change to ge, and zar verbs change to se. Only in the yo form, though. So here I get toque. All the other forms are totally normal, just like a regular old AR verb in the preterite. Aste o, amos aste senaro. This one, instead of tose, though, becomes toque. So car verbs change to k, gar verbs change to gay, and zar verbs change to se. Um, one other weird thing you need to know about the preterite, there are some verbs which receive a y in the third person plural form. Okay? Um, and this, in this case, becomes um, the verb leer, which is normal everywhere else. You remove your er, and you get leí, leíste. Unfortunately, it's not leío, it becomes leyó, with a y. Leímos, leísteis, and leyeron, with a y. So you'll notice here, these verbs that are bolded do receive a y only in the third person singular and plural forms. So, something there to keep in mind. And finally, about the preterite, I wanted you to have some trigger words to work with. Uh, this is going to become more important as we get closer to our next chapter. But as you're looking at some trigger words here, we have ayer, yesterday, anoche, last night, la semana pasada, last week, el año pasado, last year, el mes pasado, last month. You're probably noticing a pattern here. Anything with pasado usually refers to a specific event in the past and therefore requires the preterite. So, um, it can be anything past. So, el año pasado, the year past, or last year. La semana pasada, the week past, or past week. Uh, el lunes pasado, uh, last Monday. El verano pasado, last summer. So, you get all of these trigger words. Okay, so thank goodness we're still recording down there. Um, as we keep going, guys, I've given you a few examples here from your book, again, to work with with the preterite tense. You get to make up sentences. So let's look at, I said number one, but I want to look at number three. It says, el sábado yo blank. So el sábado yo, and then I get to pick a verb. So el sábado yo, and I'm going to choose mirar. Yo mirar Netflix. Oh, wait. Last, or Saturday, I too watch Netflix. Hmm, something's wrong with that. I've got to take this verb mirar and conjugate it. How do I conjugate an AR verb? Gosh, I better take off the AR. And what was that preterite ending for the yo form again? Gee, let me go back up here and check. Oh, look, it's an E with an accent. So, el sábado, yo miré Netflix. On Saturday, I watched Netflix. Yo miré Stranger Things in Netflix. Okay, and you can even get fancy, put some quotation marks in there. Yo miré Stranger Things in Netflix. Okay. Um, you might also have some questions like this. Look at number one. It asks you if trabajaste, did you work? 
¿Dónde? Where did you work? ¿En cuántas horas a la semana? How many hours per week? So notice, I'm not going to answer and say trabajaste because trabajaste was in the two form. Did you work? This comes from the verb trabajar. So I'm going to answer and say, yeah, I worked, trabajé en ETSU. Oop, I can't spell. En ETSU, or I'll just say en la universidad. Universidad. I worked at the university. Um, and I'm just going to say trabajo. 60 horas cada semana. So careful here. What did I do? I said I worked at the university. I work 60 hours per week. Hmm. I need to say that I worked 60 hours per week because the past tense implies that I worked there, not that I worked there currently. So trabajé in the preterite, in the past tense. Look at number six. Jugaste un deporte. ¿Cuál? Did you play a sport? Which one? So jugaste comes from the verb jugar. You learned just a moment ago that verbs that end in car change to k, verbs that end in gar change to ge, and verbs that end in zar change to say, but only in this yo form. So as I go back and I want to say that, yeah, I played, I'm going to say yo and I'm going to take jugar. We know that gar changes to ge. So I'm going to say yo jugué al fútbol. I played soccer. Yo jugué al fútbol. Okay. So you have that as an example. Um, now, we're going to take a moment to talk about some stem changing verbs in the preterite. Um, you may remember stem changers from the present tense, which is great. Um, now, I do want to notate there are not a ton of verbs that have stem changers in the preterite. And if you hate stem changers, you're very thankful for that. Um, now, the verbs that do have stem changers in the preterite, though, are always IR verbs. Okay, this only applies to IR verbs. If a verb is an IR verb and it has a stem change from E to IE in the present tense, that means it only changes from E to I in the preterite. I'm going to say that one more time. So to determine whether or not a verb is a stem changer in the preterite, in the past tense, we first have to look to see, is it an IR verb? If it's an IR verb, it might be a stem changer, but let's check. Only IR verbs that have stem changes from E to IE or O to UE are stem changers in the preterite. So if a verb normally has a stem change from E to IE in the present tense, in the preterite, it only changes from E to I, and it only changes from E to I in the third person singular and plural boxes. If a verb in the present tense has a stem change from O to UE, it only changes in the third person singular and plural forms from O to U. Now, you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, could this be any more complicated? All right, well, it could be, but we're not going to go there. I want to show you an example that I think is going to help you visualize this. So think about the verb dormir, which means to sleep. You know that dormir in the present tense has a stem change from O to UE, which means in the preterite it's only going to change in the third person singular and plural boxes from O to U. So let's take what we know about the preterite and apply it to dormir first. So to conjugate a verb like dormir, the first thing I do is take off the IR, carry down my dorm. If I want to say that I slept, dormi, you slept, dormiste, he or she slept, dormio, we slept, dormimos, vosotros slept, dormisteis, and y'all slept, dormieron. Now, this is wrong because a verb that has a stem change in the present tense from O to UE, dormir is one of those, since a verb, it ends in IR, it has a stem change from O to UE in the present tense. That means that in the preterite, only in the third person, singular and plural boxes, the O is going to change to a U. So we know those two are wrong. Let's cover them up. My O changes to a U. I get durmio and durmieron. So my O changes to a U only in the he, she, or the they boxes in the third person singular and plural. There are other verbs that follow this pattern as well. Notice again, they're all IR verbs. Here's a list from your book. Um, there's not a ton of these. You can see them listed for you here. Okay. So, as we go back to 
uh, just about wrap up here. It says, I want to give you a little practice with this irregular preterite. So it says, el equipo de Tomás Guiterres, blank, and it gives you the verb competir en los Juegos Panamericanos de Verano. So Tomás Guiterres' team competed in the games of the summer, the, the Pan American games of the summer. So if I want to rewrite this sentence, I might say that Thomas's team competed. So I get the verb competir. Notice, competir ends in IR. It is a stem change from E to IE in the present tense. So therefore here, it's going to be a stem change from E to I. So let's go ahead and make this E and I. I get competir. I'm going to drop off my IR. Thomas's team, in this case, Thomas's team is it. And for it, we use this bottom left box, the he, she box. So Thomas's team competed, compitio. It competed in the, in the Pan American Games. Um, look at number two. It says, I'm going to make this bigger so you can see. Okay, I'm just going to have to top it up here. Sorry. It says that, antes de salir, before leaving, Tomas llamó al Hotel Bahía. So he, before leaving, he called this hotel and pedir habitaciones para todos los jugadores. He asked for rooms for the whole, for all the players. So to say he asked, I have my verb pedir. I know that pedir is normally a stem change from e to i in the present tense. So therefore in the preterite, it's still going to change from e to i only in the he or she and they boxes. So in this case, Thomas would be he. It's going to be in this bottom left box. So to say he ordered, my E changes to an I, and I add my preterite ending of I-O. So, antes de salir, Tomás llamó al hotel y pidió habitaciones para todos los jugadores. He asked for um, rooms for all the players. So, hopefully you're seeing how that works. You can also see this in a more open format, where you get to write your own sentences. So it says, anoche, yo, and it gives you the verb dormir. So, anoche, yo, I slept. Take off the IR and dormir for the yo form. I'm going to add back in. Good. Hopefully you're saying I with an accent. So, oh, 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 wrong I, sorry. So, anoche yo dormi. Last night I slept. I'm going to change it and say, anoche yo no dormi. Muy bien. Last night I didn't sleep very well. Look at number three. It says, el fin de semana pasado. So, last weekend, yo... And it gives you the verb almorzar. Oh, ho, ho. Remember, in the preterite, verbs that end in car change to k. Verbs that end in gar change to gay. And verbs that end in czar change to say. So my czar is removed, becomes say. I forgot my r. Almorce. So last weekend, yo almorce in um, Chili's. Last weekend, I ate lunch at Chili's. Yo almorce in Chili's. Okay? I think you get the hang of how these work. Hopefully this video lecture was helpful to you in some way. If you have any further questions about a specific grammar topic, I would encourage you to check out the content section of D2L. Um, over here, under content, there are plenty of resources that you can use. Um, sorry, my computer's being so slow here. I have 10,000 browsers open. Um, okay, let's try. Come on. Well, anyway, here we go. Under the content section, if you scroll down to Chapter 6 Resources, you can see there's a whole slew of resources on everything you possibly need. There's information on that lovely Head, Shoulders, Knees, and Toes song. You can listen to it again. Reflexive verb song. There are videos practicing and showing you step-by-step -step how to do the preterite. For AR verbs and ERIR verbs that are regular, there are videos about stem changers in the preterite. There's information on an extra credit project about one's daily routine. It shows you how to do it, and there's a rubric here, and I've given you three examples from past semesters with students who have done this before. Um, so once you've completed that, if you have any questions, let me know. And then down here, there are additional resources available. Okay. So you have a lot to do this week. You have your textbook assignments, your ESAM assignments, your quizzes, and your exam. You also have that optional extra credit if you so choose to complete it. Then you have all those extra resources if you get stuck. So watch those videos, read those articles. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. 
And then if you're still confused, um, you can always email me. My email address is here, harrisonmt1 at etsu.edu. Um, so guys, I hope this has been helpful to you, and I hope you guys have a great week. Thank you.